As I mentioned, uh, we have uh, some special guests uh, with us. Uh, they are special. I actually wouldn't call them our guests only because they are family. Uh, and they've been among us many times. But it's been a while. So I want you to just give a warm welcome to Raymond and Carmen. Please come on up. Uh, you know, uh, they, uh, Raymond, is, uh, Raymond and Carmen are pastors of IFGF Surabaya. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sit down, please. And uh, we love these guys. Uh, I, 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 now, Raymond, how, how long have we known each other? Uh, they get these guys some mics, yeah? Perhaps? Oh, they got mics right there. Never mind. I think six years. Six yeah. Yeah, Since quite, 2016. Quite, yeah, quite a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was all Raymond and I's fault that IFGF ICC came together. Yeah. I don't know why we did it, but we're still trying to figure that out. But it's okay. It's all good. Yeah. And uh, so today we're going to, and, and, and I asked them, there's this, this couple of reasons I asked them to, uh, to share on this subject of finding joy in marriage. One reason is because their child is named Joy, so they found joy Amen. in parenting. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the second reason is their, their children are a, a little bit older. They've been through all the different... Uh, uh, fun stuff, yeah? And so I'm going to let them just tell them, tell you a little bit about their kids, and then we're going to jump right in. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Don, Carol, for giving us the opportunity. And also, uh, how many of you agree with me that the worship team and volunteers are doing a great job? Very amazing. And thank you so much for having this event in the month of February. I think when I grow up, I will... I want to be like you. Have <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, he, was, he was saying that he's younger than me. That's I know. <laughs> I think this is uh, show the commitment of the church and the pastor for the life of the people, even like married, single, and parents. Amen. So great job, and we should be proud of ICC and IFGF Amen. in Bali. Amen. Let's give a round of applause one more time to our church and uh, the pastor who really cares about the family. Amen. So. My name is Raymond and uh, my beautiful wife, uh, Carmen. We've been married for 20 years, going 21 years this year uh, in this July. And uh, we are blessed with two kids. Joy uh, is going to be 20 years old now in college right now. Uh, in three months, going to be 20. <laughs> and uh, my, 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 my second uh, kid, Marvel. Marvel is going to be 17 next two months. So, uh, yeah. We we've been through like the season. <laughs> he's so, gonna be he's he's gonna be leaving in a year or two, yeah. Yeah. How are you gonna feel about that? Sad. <laughs> you know, my wife and I, and, and I'll probably add things just because we're in similar seasons. We're, our kid, child, yeah. children are a little bit older, but uh, you know, when when Rachel first left the house, you know, Carol was like you know depressed for like three months. Uh -huh. uh, and I was like, yes, more free time. More free time. <laughs> Matter of fact, when Carol asked to get married, when she said she wanted to have kids, yeah. I actually made a calculation. I'll just be honest with you. Uh, we were uh, 28, 29 years old, and that's when she started saying, I want to have kids. And, and I said, uh, I calculated. She said she wanted to have kids. I said, let's see, 20 years from now, I'll be 50. I'll still have a golf swing. Yes, let's do it now. I don't <laughs> Um, that's really bad. Yeah. Carmen, I've been quiet. You've been quiet. Why don't you share a little bit about your kids? We are blessed. We are grateful for them. Very grateful for them. And I believe that uh, our children is a gift from God. Yeah. Okay, it's a gift from God. And we are so grateful that God entrusted us with joy and marvel. Because he believes that we can. We, it, he has chosen us as parents who can parent them and to raise them up the way he wants us to. So for that, I'm grateful and uh, we adore our children. Uh, I miss Joy uh, and, you know, soon it'll be Marvel's turn. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to make you sad. <laughs> it happens, yeah. I, you know, and on Monday I, or Wednesday, I guess I'm going to see uh, Marvel, so I'm going to ask him, you know, how do you feel about God choosing them? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I think he will Let be so know. proud of 
<laughs> yeah, because you'll pay him to make sure he says that. Anyways, no, I'm just joking. I'm joking. We're going to jump right in because there's so much to cover. And I know even in the first uh, gathering, they struggled to cover all that. I don't think they even got through. So I'm going to jump right in. And, and the first question I have is that, like, I, with, with Carol and I, and I, I relate it this way, when, when we first started talking about having kids, uh, we started saying, well, what kind of values uh, do we want to instill and impart into the children? And, and we found that, like, some of the things that I wanted to instill and some of the things that Carol wanted to instill were a bit different. So we had to talk about them. So maybe just talk about, uh, how, uh, like, some of the values that you had that you decided that you wanted to build into your children and then, and then kind of how you did that. That's a big question, I know. Well, <laughs> I, I give the honor for Carmen to answer because uh, she was with them most of the time when they are. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. So um, I believe we all are the product of our family upbringing. Yeah. So we uh, come into the marriage, you know, having values um, from our parents, from our family, mm -mm. or values that we learn along the way, right? As we uh, know Christ. And and we both imparted the values that we believe in and embrace into our children, you know, because we believe in them. We, it was a natural process that we impart what uh, we believe to them. But I actually right now I encourage, looking back, we didn't have the privilege of having parenting classes or seminars to teach them how to parent our children. Trust me, we, we made so many mistakes yes. as young parents, okay? And... Um, and we truly go and grow by his grace and strength and wisdom alone that we, we made it this far. Yeah. And so um, the values that, um, so I, actually I want to encourage all the parents here. How many of you are parents in this place? If you're not parents yet, this is good for you to know. Uh, this, um, I want to encourage everyone here to start early. The sooner you instill these values into your children, the, the better it is for you and the family and for them too. So whatever values you have, I mean, um, discuss with your spouse, the mom and dad. Yep. They should be in agreement of the values that they believe. And I uh, take time to pray and, uh, you know, God, what kind of children do you want us to raise? Ooh, what do you want one. this person to be when they grow up? You know, so with that in mind, then you instill the core values, uh, family values, a set of family values that, you know, we both decide, okay, um, this is what we are going to do. This is what we are going to raise our kids uh, 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 based on these values and involve your children, okay? Communicate with your children. This is what we are going to build. Everyone in this house, wow. in this family. So you discussed with your kids. Yeah. No, we didn't. I told you we, <laughs> we, we didn't have the privilege of such classes. Oh, so we you're did telling it, them, but don't yes, do what you did. Yes, don't oh, do what okay, we got did. It, got it, got you know, it. We did it by the grace of God. But mm. now that you have, uh, you have the opportunity to learn, you know, start early. So, so you can, it's, I think having this framework help parents to direct and train their children. So, for example, um, some of the core values that we have, I think all godly values are good. Right? I mean, uh, but some of the core values that we believe in is fear of God, integrity, attitude, generosity, gratitude, honor, responsibility. This is some of the uh, values that we, we impart sure. to our children. And so if, um, if you want uh, to raise children that is of gratitude, who are always grateful. So from young, when they start, um, we always train them to see the good in everything, to see Okay, how can, what can we be grateful for in this season, mm. in this incident, in mm. every little thing? Very good. So, um, f uh, so when we, uh, I'm sorry, so when we, when they start whining or complaining, okay, and we know that is against the, the value yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. giving yeah. thanks. So we remind them, hey, you know, just learn to be grateful, okay, and, and, uh, and, and start giving thanks. So that is how you, you can implement that, uh, you can impart those values from a young age sure. till now. Uh, you know, Pastor Raymond, I know, I know like as, as, a, as a husband you're, and you're working, yes. and you're, 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 but you could still instill values yeah. to your children. So how did, how did you do that? Because I know that you love your kids and you want to see them grow in value. So how, what are some of the things you did even though you were working? How did you try to do that? Well, you know that... Uh, Values are not only taught, but uh, values are caught. You know that <laughs> really people people see how we 
we do as parents. That's why it's very good during the child dedication, you ask the parents to like leave us away right. in the Christian, uh, Christian lifestyle. For example, like a uh, fear card, you know, the children will watch you closely. Amen. Like I have to set example that I'm, uh, when make, I make a decision based on the word of God, not only teach them how to read the Bible, right. uh, we or I myself during the work and ministry in every decision that I make, sometimes I explain them. I have to make this decision because the word of God say here. So yeah. out of fear of God, I want to do this. That's really good. Especially during this pandemic time, yeah. you know, and uh, beginning like 2020, yeah. you know, the, I, I remember the last time I went to ICC is uh, February 2020. And wow. then right after that, in March, right. we are locked down and we are yeah. online. You know, during the online service, I'll make sure that we have the right attitude during the uh, you know, even though we uh, we watch on YouTube or whatever social media, because some of them really, I I, I got report for some of friends that the children really see, hey, you know, uh, having like service or Sunday catering is not as important anymore. So you know, children will cut that value, That's especially right. and if you watch the. You on you don't engage in the service. You only watch as if like you yeah. just watch TV and yeah. maybe you're sleeping and yeah. something like that. That's uh, really good. They will see really the good. way you face, and that's how we instill. We want yeah. to make sure they see us yeah. really because uh, during the service and uh, also when we read Bible and make decision, make sure we live out that value. You, so can I? I just, I just want to share some example like when I was growing up uh, when I was especially when I was in my teen years and I'm going to ask you a question about this in a minute <laughs> yes when I was in my teen years though my dad I love my dad my dad was a great dad he didn't he didn't come to Jesus until he was 82 so yeah. you know and my my dad he he smoked cigarettes and he drank and I remember when I was 14 years old I said dad you smoke so I could smoke <laughs> you drink so I can drink yeah now he was responsible drinker, but I'm 14. I'm not that responsible. But that's what happens when, 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 when they see us. And, and, and so, you know, growing up, you know, I could say to my kids, you know how I live. You know, I don't do these things, so you shouldn't do them either. Yeah. And it's really, like you said, it's more how you caught yeah. than taught. But now I have a question. It's a, it's a tough one because when, when the kids are growing up, you have these values, but when they get to be... In, you use the word tween, I like that, like yeah. 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. I think some of the kids, they, they, they hear the values, they, they learn the values, but they're trying to learn, like, well, well maybe I want to be myself. Like, so how do you discern the difference between, like, a rebellious kid who's just doing things that, like, you taught them not to do, or a kid who's just trying to understand himself? There is a difference. I know that's a tough question. I'm going to throw it there. I don't know who wants to answer it, but I'm not answering that one. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I told them they could say I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Did you experience that at all in your, uh, in, your, in your children? Not to put them on the spot. And I know you've got to be careful here. I don't. We have a good story. Yeah. We have a good story. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yes, so we do have a, a very interesting story because our children, both of them are semi-homeschooled. So, um, and, you know, they were in a Christian school, you know, in a Christian community. So we thought everything was fine. You know, we, we, I, we, you know, we just live, you know, we go to church, they serve, we serve and everything. And so one day, uh, by the way, I have permission from my daughter to share this. Last night I, which I, is very wise. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. Yeah, so not she's not going to pick up my phone anymore. But I got permission from her to share this, and she can laugh about it right now. Yes. Um, so when she she moved into a regular school when she was in grade seven. So we have this rule back then that by ten o'clock you have to put your phone, your gadget inside our room. So one day it was about ten ten ish, and so she she put her uh, um, she came into my room. Uh, um, and, you know, put the, uh, uh, do what she's supposed to do. And then that night, she rushed out and, you know, and said, okay, good night, Daddy, Mommy. And as she opened the door, okay, her phone dropped from her pants. 
<laughs> she was tr Busted. trying. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to smuggle her phone <laughs> out of our room. Okay, and we we were shocked. Like we yeah. looked at each other and we looked at her. Try to be calm. No, I, no. we weren't calm. <laughs> We were not calm at all. We were like, oh gosh, what happened to her? You know, this is, you know, everything was fine. So we are like, give me your phone. <laughs> give me your phone. And, um, and she was trying to delete stuff from her phone. And in our family, we, when we uh, gave her the phone, we told them that um, you need to share your password to daddy and mommy. But you have our word that we will not look through your phone without your permission. And that's, we, that's really good. We have never done that. So that's right. I want you to say that again because I think parents should need to hear that. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Okay. So we told them that, you know, uh, we, need, you, we need to have your passwords, but you can have our word that we will not check your phone without your permission or without, uh, you know, without your presence with us. So took her phone and then um, she was trying to delete and we sent her back to the room because I was, we were still in shock and it was late at night. Um, so we said, okay, go back to your room. We'll talk tomorrow after school. So, and she left, you know, we, I opened, I, I read her chats and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we, we were shocked at, uh, yeah. at, at some of the, uh, the, the chats and conversations that she had with, um, uh, her group. But, but one thing, uh, it was, she trusted a friend with, uh, her secret and this friend shared it to the group. Okay, just uh, just simplify things. And then, you know, anyway, and then, uh, so the next day, the next day, I w we were still in shock. Like, yeah. you know, after she went into the room, <laughs> we were on our bed and we look at each other and I, I think I cried and asked, what did we do wrong? Yes. Yeah. Parents, you do that, right? Yeah. Don't lie to me. You ask yourself that question, what did and we do I wrong? That? <laughs> yeah. What happened? So the next day, I, 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 you know, I, I just couldn't do anything. I just, you know, spent time with myself and God. And God, give me wisdom as to deal with this matter. You know, this is the first time for, for the both of us too. Yeah. So after school, uh, I, I went to talk to her. Um, I, I, I explained to her why I'm, tr you know, I'm trying. I, it's, I told her it's my first time being a mom of a teenager. I've never done this before. Yeah, 11 and years old, isn't it? Yeah, 11, 12 years old. Yeah. She, she, she just uh, went into grade, grade seven. Yeah. And, and I know that she was having, uh, she was dealing with adjustments too. A, a transition and adjustment yeah. in her life too. So I know that she's going through a lot of stuff. I know that you're going through a lot of stuff. And, you know, we, I told her we are very shocked that this happened, you know. Um, and I told her that, you know, I'm trying my best as a mom because I uh, wasn't close to my mom growing up. So I wanted to have a different kind of relationship with her. So I was really open to her and, you know, I was um, telling her that, uh, no, nah, I believe in teachable moments. Teachable moments are moments that you catch and you know that it's, you know, it's a God appointed that time yeah. to share something to your children. So I believe it's a God appointed moment. So we, I, I told her, you know what, the Holy, God is alive and the Holy Spirit knows everything. Yes. And this is one way of him, you know, revealing this to us, you know. So uh, she needs to know that, you know, we are close to God, okay. <laughs> he, he, he's, he senses things and he allows things to happen. So basically I told her, too, that about um, her friend who betrayed her, who, who betrayed her trust, I told her that you can always come to us. I think um, Joy was pretty much uh, a reserved person. She doesn't share as much. She's more private. So that was the, a good time um, for, for us, for me to tell her that Bridges. you can always come to us with your secrets because, you know, your secret is always safe with us mm. and we will always have the best interest uh, for you and we will not share this casually to, to people. So mm. that was a breakthrough conversation. And, and of course, since then, we had to work extra hard to build a relationship, you know, to, to rebuild our relationship with her because we now know that she's a, in a different season. Mm. And so we have to put in all the more effort to get close to her. Well, I want to, uh, Pastor Raymond, you said something that I, I want to kind of uh, focus on for a second because you said, stay calm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I know as parents, we want our kids to share things to us, but then if we react in 
an Italian way uh, <laughs> or a batak way, uh, then the kids won't really share. So how did you, how did you, how do you deal with that? Like, how, I know that, like, how, how do you handle that? Well, we learn hard The Chinese way. <laughs> the Chinese oh, the poker face. Yeah, yeah. yeah, poker face. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think we have to train ourselves to, to have a poker Stay face. Stay calm and try together with Carmen after that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. We cry yeah. at that moment. We speak in tongues well, see, and cry in our hearts. You went in the other room and you kind of... No, after she left. Uh, right. I think we stayed... Uh, no, we to tried to stay calm. We weren't cl calm that but, night. Yeah, I'm sure. After that, we cry and what did I do Yeah, wrong? what did we do wrong? We do wrong. Right, yeah. And it, even like, uh, you know, some of the recent, uh, like, Joy gave like that because when she did something wrong, like her friend said, "Hey, you're a pastor kid. You're yeah, a like add, like added pressure for yeah, herself and sure. our kids. So we don't want it to happen, and we explain to her. If uh, one of the, one of the things Carol and I did, and I, and I'll just share because I feel like I feel like we're in similar. <laughs> I, I had this thing with my kids. I I didn't do it a lot. Maybe twice a year, max. You know, never more than that. I know I didn't. But I would tell her, i say, okay, we are now in the area of cone of silence. I called it the cone of silence. It's an old movie, yeah, old TV show. You have to know what that is. Anyways, I would say we're on the cone of silence. You can say whatever you want. You can tell me anything that you've done, anything that, you, you know, that you're worried about or anything inside you, and I will never bring it up to you. I will not react to you. I will not say anything to you. I will not get upset with you, and I'll never punish you for it. I just want to know. Now, for a parent... You want to know how hard that was? Because sometimes they told me things that yeah. like, I was quite surprised about. But what for me, the, my thinking was, I want to know because that's, that's information to help me love my kid better. Even <laughs> if it's something they did wrong, I didn't punish them. They, they knew that was the time to confess. Uh, but, you know, it worked because then I understood them better and I was able, and they would come to me easier. Yes. But during that time, it was hard. I mean, I... Yeah. Mm. We are not as perfect as Pastor Don. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to move on because I'm very careful with the time. And I want to jump into, I was going to do seasons, but I want to go to boundaries. Because I think boundaries are uh, important. So, like, in, in, in your, you mentioned a little, in your, in your growing up, you had to have boundaries. And, and I want to talk about how do you set boundaries... Uh, in a way where the child can and can live within those boundaries. But also, I know, and I'm just being honest, I know that there are a lot of parents who are, what I would use the word, overprotective or yeah. too restrictive on their kids. And then when they get a chance to be free, it's over. So yeah. how did you balance? I know it's a big question. How did you balance all that? How did you <coughs> set those things? How did you deal with all that uh, in the context of your family? Well, of course, uh, we grew up differently uh, when uh, she grew up in, like, apart from parents, right? Because uh, she grew up in Singapore. I, I grew up as Christian kids, pastor kids. Oh, boy. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, the, way, the way I brought up, uh, I call, uh, maybe I introduced the term isolation. Ah, you know? good word. If you see the potential danger in front, you try to protect. That's how my parents. So, sure. you know, I grew up. Uh, didn't watch movie. So the first movie I saw together with Carmen was like Prince of Egypt when Cartoon. I was 18 years old in the theater. First one. Did you think you were in, in the, sin in the theater, while you were in watching the theater. it? <laughs> in the theater. Wow. He was, uh, he was I, speaking I, in tongues next to me <laughs> throughout the movie. That's the way, you know. That's called isolation. I know their intentions. Uh, so, I, 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 so I don't be corrupted with the values sure. of the world. So right. I have to be selective, only be friend with uh, like maybe the same religion, sure. Christian, and I cannot sing or listen to worldly music, you wow. know, only worship. So I, wow. I really enjoy worship until now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way. So you cut it off from the world. So I can be sanctified to be holy, just for set apart, just for Jesus. Mm. It worked for me. It worked for me. At least I'm. Uh, I turned out okay, right? Oh, okay. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> That's good. By the, okay. By the only two things you turned out okay were good. Okay. We're okay. Good. <laughs> time, time, time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the time. But in some cases, like many of my friends, they got very rebellious because once they like 
go out of the country, go out from the parents, they will do everything that they are not allowed to right. do. Right. Even I couldn't go to Bali, you know, the first time I went to Bali is because of honeymoon, because it's Hali, uh, in Bali a lot of, you know, yeah. spirits, a lot idol, of spirits here, yeah? so <laughs> be careful if you're not strong in God, maybe you can do something. Wow. And that's the way I grew up, but I appreciate that, yeah, sure. you know, I was they loved you. They loved yeah. you. That's called isolation, but you know, uh, I will introduce Did you do that with your children? No, I do insulation, you know. Insulation. You insulation. Okay. You see the potential danger and, you know, you guide them. For example, uh, you know that if you are cycling or even golfing, you, you will have, like, risk. Right. Fell down, everything. But you don't say that, don't drive at all, don't bike at all, but you guide them and you see the potential That's risk. Good. And even uh, I quote from uh, Jesus' prayer, uh, from John 17, verse 15 to 17, this is, this is the prayer of Jesus about uh, his people. I don't ask you to take them out of the world, you know. Isolation is take them from the That's world. That's good. Right? That's good. But you keep them and protect them from the evil one. That's, That's the prayer. really good. We have to protect them and keep them. How? They are not of the world, you know. We are not of the world, even though we are in the world. Just I am not of the world sanctify them in the truth, set them apart for your purpose, make them holy. Your word is the truth. That's really good. So we don't do isolation, even though I appreciate what my parents did to me. Right. But, we, but I don't think it will work because the information I know right now, people can, like our children, can right. access easily. Right. Yeah. We cannot keep to whatever from the world. Wow. But we can protect them, sanctify them, by introducing the word of God That's because really the good. truth will set you free. So in solution, we have like some protection. For example, uh, we protect them for from fell down. Uh, even though they fell down, we know how to protect them. That's right. So with our children, we set the expectation clearly. For example, if they go to party or maybe go with friends, I ask, oh, who are you with? what you are doing, or what you're going to do there, and what yeah. time you will go home. So we have like some of curfew, sure. like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. And then first, uh, we see the potential risk and danger, and we, we, we tell them our expectation. Mm. This is the boundaries. Mm. Uh, this is our expectation as a parents for you. Mm. And then the second one, we learn to trust them. We learn, okay, I give you trust. Uh, I, you... You can go to the party, sure. but come back at 9 p.m. and see if he can, she can, or he can it's keep really the trust good. given. And then the third, I, I believe the insulation is uh, we we train them how to make a wise decision. Very good. So next time they ask for permission to do something, we just not simply no. If it's a sin, we say no to sin. But if there's something that maybe have a potential danger, and uh, we don't just say no, but we train them to make a wise decision Very based good. on the word of God. That's wow. why the John 17 say, don't take them out of the world, but sanctify them with the word of God. So wow. we introduce why we allow this thing, why we are not, uh, we don't allow to, to do this thing. Maybe where, where, where were you when I was parenting? I needed that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to... <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Are you going to say something? If you, or I can move on. Up to you. Uh, no, I think it, it builds up to the moment, too. I'm going to go back uh, on seasons a little. I, um, you know, I think we were able to do that with Joy, you know, when she was uh, a teenager. We were able to ask, okay, who did you uh, go out with, you know, with, uh, and things like that. We were able to ask her because she knows her, our expectations of her. And I think as parents, we, we, we can't wait until they are teenagers before we start asking those questions, right? We have to uh, take a few steps back sure. and start younger, build a habit of chatting with them, talking to them about anything and everything. So, you know, uh, ask them to ask them about their friends, you yeah. know, who is their favorite friend, who is, you know, who, how, how they're doing at school. So we know their life and their friends. So they are, you know, they it's get good. used to telling us stuff from young. And because if you start a teenager, uh, starting at teenagers, they won't easily 
uh, tell you, oh, I went out with this, this, mm. this. So I think you have to start, you know, preparing for the next season and transition. Okay, speaking of that, uh, you set me up. <laughs> uh, have to talk about it. Uh, you say you start young or you start... Obviously, your kids are older. You had to have a little discussion with them about sexuality. There's no way around it. Uh, at least I think parents should have... Because if they don't speak to you, they're going to talk to somebody else. And yeah. Uh, I, I don't would, know. <laughs> <laughs> so like how do you, and, and, and you have both a boy and a girl. Yes. So like how did you deal with that subject and dealing with boundaries, dealing with, you know, seasons, all of it fits for that. How did you deal with that with your children or did you? I think it's so important right now, especially to talk about sexuality, not only about sex, but talking about sexuality to our children. Because right now, everything, um, just how I agree with my husband, uh, Pastor Raymond said that the absolute standard of truth should be the Bible, should be God's word. Amen. But that truth has been twisted uh, a so lot in so many ways, you know. So we, Even in the church. Even yes. in the church and uh, among our children, they are presented with so much tr so-called truth through TikTok, through Instagram, Twitter, or whatever you call it. So um, I think it's very important to talk to them. Um, once again, you know, when our kids were young, we didn't know all this too, okay? But um, his mom, you know, um, but we, uh, I, I, I taught them when they were young, okay? God created boys and girls. There's two gender, <laughs> boy and girl, okay? And then um, talk to them, God created us. And we talk to them about their private parts, okay? Excuse me, but girls have vagina and boys have penis. And, you know, those words used to be taboo, okay? Every time we use <laughs> yes. those words, it's like even my mom, you know, the older generation is like, ooh, uh, jorok, you know what I'm saying? But those are, we have to come to terms that those are just body parts, Okay, we have to speak uh, openly about them, and they they have to be comfortable to to, uh, to speaking about to us about those kind of things. So, um, at six to nine years old, okay, we share more God's plan for families. So God, God creates families through a man and a woman. That's it. Okay, so from young, I think we need to build their sexuality so they won't be sure. confused when they are. Uh, older, and then, and then I, I, I teach this to my kids uh, when they're young. Okay, if anyone tries to touch your private parts, yes, okay, slap them, kick them, do yes. whatever you can, okay, <laughs> to stop that behavior. And please come and tell daddy yes, and mommy. Yes, yes. That's very important. Very right important. Yes. Can I say something? Yes. Because uh, especially I know as 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 pastor, we we would visit a lot of families, and so we had we had that we would do it in the car on the way. Yeah. You know, not that we would say it about the people we're going to, but if anybody says anything or asks you something, what do you do? And they would all tell daddy and mommy. And then we would ask the second question because sometimes they don't know that, like, there's some underlying issues. So we would play games, like, just, like, fun mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. And it was always that, always, tell daddy and mommy. Always, that was always the end of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. So very important. So, and we didn't, you know, I, uh... When t talking to Joy, I remember about n now back to the sex part. I think I took her to watch a movie called uh, Dua, Garis Biru. Dua Garis Biru. It's an Indonesian movie, and I heard about that. So I t intentionally take her to watch that movie. And after that movie, I had a discussion with her. We went on date. We went to eat after that, and I, you know, discussed things with her. You know, so I, I shared with her. You know, I asked her, "What did you learn from the movie?" So I shared with her, like, you know, every sure. action has its consequences. Right, you can choose your actions, actions, but you cannot choose your consequences. And mm. this young girl, young girl, chose what she uh, to do, what she did, to, and she had to sacrifice. I think in that movie, she wasn't able to have kids anymore after that because she did an abortion or something like that. But you know, those are so we we I think we parents need to pray and seek wisdom from God and. Seriously, yes, ask yes. for the right moment and time to 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 talk yeah. to our children, yeah. because did, you, did yeah. you talk to the Marvel about it, or did you talk to Marvel? Yes, I, I talked to Marvel okay. uh, when uh, he grew up. But actually, I also when Joy like eleven or uh, no twelve, going thirteen, I took her for a 
it to Singapore for three days. I have ministry there, and I just uh, in the room. I just told her uh, this is uh, put like some expectation. Sure. I, I, I will uh, as a daddy. This is how I treat you. I expect you like uh, you future husband do the same Amen. the way I treat you because you are so precious for That's them. Great. And also for Marvel, I think uh, especially last year, uh, we are in Surabaya. I took like some couple uh, uh, time to just both of us mm. and uh, just talk about men's stuff. And yeah. so See, if, 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 if we won't talk to them, then, <laughs> then, then why, like they're so yeah. afraid and then of course they're going to go somewhere else and that's not good. Yes. Yeah. All right. They still find it awkward, though, when we talk to them. Yeah, it's not awkward. <laughs> they, it will still be an awkward topic, but, you know, it needs to be done. Yeah, it, it does. It really does. All right. Um, yeah, and I have a good book. If those, yeah, they're coming in now. I have a good book. If anybody wants to know, it's called The Talk. The Talk. It's a really good book to help you share with your children in this subject. But, I, you know, don't just open the book up. Look at it first. If you don't like it, that's your deal. I'm not going <laughs> to argue. But I want to, we, we, we're going to do something special in a minute. But I do want to give these guys at least five minutes. Uh, I, I wanted, I wanted uh, Pastor Raymond, uh, father to father, and then Carmen, if you would talk mother to mother. Just give us, like, you know, I mean, I know you guys aren't perfect, but what advice would you give to a father? Like you, Pastor Don. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was easy. I met, I met Raymond long ago. I knew he wasn't perfect about five minutes in. No, no. But, I mean, uh, you know, Raymond, just speak father to father. What advice should you give, uh, you know, if you could give any advice? And then, and sure. I think, uh, I, I think I would like to quote, like, two verses. Uh, first, it's Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5, uh, New Living Translation. Children are the key from the Lord. Woo. They are a reward from Him. You know, the children are a reward from him. You know, children born to be a young man like arrows in the warrior's hands. You know that we, especially father, we are warriors. We are warriors. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. Amen. He will not to be put shame in the conference of his accusers at the city of the kids. You know, the arrow in the hand of warriors is only for a short time. You know, it's the purpose is to give support and provide direction while the arrow is still in our hands wow. as warriors. You know? Wow, that's really So good. all parents will go like all the transition every season, childhood, uh, teenhood, adulthood. And, you know, think about we are as a warrior, especially father here. You are a warrior and each season has its own challenges. It's good. But trust me. It's much easier if we can direct the arrow while it's still That's in our so hands. That's so good. Where That's were you when I was a parent? So we keep sewing, sewing. Uh, you know, in transition, sometimes we know that all children don't want to go to church anymore. <laughs> maybe uh, I got bored with the, <laughs> the service. Maybe not in ICC because I see, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. It's very <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> but there's time, like, we are rebellious. And, but we believe we keep sewing and not get tired at a point in time, we will reap Amen. the harvest. That's good. So our job to steward them in the process of maturity, it's much easier. Even though, you know, some people say, wow, maybe too late. No, it's, while they are still in our hand, it's much easier to direct so them. Good. Once the arrow is like left us, it's much harder to Sweet. direct them. That's the first I, I, I want to do this. I, I, Amen. I, that's just so good. That's so good, Randy. That's so good. And also, uh, the second verse I want to quote for uh, Father is from 100, uh, Psalm 112. Psalm 112, verse 1. Uh, I think this is the word of God. Uh, say that. Uh, sorry. That, you know, uh, bless, bless is the man who feared God. Amen. The generation uh, of the upright will be blessed. So my advice to our fathers, fear God. Your family will feel secure if Woo. they know the man who led the family fears God. 
Mm. Even you have to go maybe for a while, for two, two days or three out of town, your wife and your children will be still That's good. because you are man of God. Love this commandment. Fear God. Husband, train yourself to fear God in all transition of your wow. life, in all seasons of your life. And second, love your wife. You know, the children will be secure if they know that the father loves the mother. And you know, the best gift you can give to your children is your marriage. That's it. So keep your marriage healthy, strong and healthy. And I believe it will take care of the children at least by 50%. They are secure. They are secure. Love your wife. And think about what legacy you want to leave behind. Mm. Wow. When maybe you are not here anymore. I think that's it for the, oh, that's, for the that's, father. That's, Thank that's, you that's, so much. That's for anointed <laughs> stuff right there. It's anointed stuff. Carmen? Okay, how many moms are in this room today? Okay, if you're sitting close to a mom, please tell them that they are doing a great job. <laughs> Can we give it up for the moms? Yeah. <laughs> Being a mom is not easy. You know, I'm a mom myself. And, you know, there are seasons where you, you blame yourself for not doing a good enough job. You question yourself, you know, am I... Uh, doing enough? Am I preparing my children enough for, uh, you know, for the future? It last year when you know I was with Joy and Joy was leaving for college, I questioned myself a lot. Like, oh no, I know I, I I was worried. I was guilty. I was questioning myself. Is oh no, she's leaving, and um, am I doing uh, enough? So uh, I'm just gonna share three points really quick. Number one, do not compare yourself with other moms. That's good. Okay. Because God chose you to be the mom for your kids. God not. God chose me to be the mom for Joy and Marvel. And God chose you to be your children's mom. And, you know, because God believes that you have the capacity, you have the ability to parent them, to raise them up the way He wants you to. And God will give your children the grace to be your children. Amen. Right, Pastor Don? Good word. Good <laughs> yeah. word. And... And you don't have to be perfect because our children will see your heart and your effort and how you lean on God, okay? God, our children are not looking for perfect parents, perfect mom. They, they want to see your effort to grow and to... And to uh, That's good. Number two, do not dwell in past regrets, okay? This is also very important because, you know, a lot of us will think of, oh, I should have done this when they were toddlers. I should have not given them gadgets two years ago, you know, and, and all the what ifs. You know, if you, because I believe there is always hope in Christ Jesus and He is able to make all things new. Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be consequences, okay, but we have to put in more effort and lean on Him to, you know, and believe that God is able to turn things around for good. Even though we failed in the past, yeah. we can always start. Now, there's always a brand new day, a brand new chance. And I believe it's never too late. And number three, trust and surrender our children to God. Let Him alone be our source of strength, our source of hope, and our source of joy. Never underestimate the power of prayer. Ooh. Praying for your children. Because there were so many times in our parenting journey where God reveals things about them that, you know, we, we didn't think, you know, one day I remember I just wa walked into Joy, I, I sense something is wrong with her. I just walked into her room and said, do you have something to tell me? And she started crying. I believe God is at work, That's even right. in our children. That's yes. right. So I want to um, encourage all parents, all moms, trust and surrender our children to God. Okay, there is only so much we can do and there is only so much we can learn. We can learn all the how-tos. We can learn to implement values and stuff. All those are important, very important. But ultimately, we need to lean on His strength mm -hmm. and his, we need His wisdom to, to help us through this parenting journey. Because being parents is a lifetime job, okay? There is such thing as ex-husband or ex-wife. I'm sorry, I hope it doesn't happen. But there's not, there's not, there is no ex-children. Amen. Once a mom, once Good a word. dad, it's always, you'll always be. And there are times that as a mom, I will always worry about my children, right, yeah. Pastor Don? Yeah. 
<laughs> and now she's in college. Next, you know, after she uh, gets accepted into a good college, praise God. Now, who is she going to marry? After she marries, when is she going to have children? After that, will she be able to be a good mom as I am? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, then it's, 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 it's a long journey ahead. That's why we, you know, we need to, I think one thing that, you know, you can't forget everything that we shared tonight, I think uh, t today, this morning. I think one thing we need to do as parents is to lead them to Christ Amen. because they need to experience His miracles on their own. They need to experience His strength and His grace, you know, and, and right now we are experiencing with joy because she is far away from us and, you know, we, we can only surrender her That's right. to, to God. And remember that our children, once again, they belong to God, okay? So we just need to surrender. Even though it's hard, let's, you know, let's just make Him our source of strength once again. And I pray that, you know, every of our children will see the beauty of Christ through That's us. Good. They can feel the heart of the Father through us. They know that they are loved unconditionally, not because of what they do, but because of who they are. You know, so parents, let's raise up a generation Woo! of children who mm. will love God, who will serve God and obey God and Amen. honor God all the days of their life. Yeah. Amen. Amen.